Hey everyone! Six years ago, I made a tutorial showing how to draw realistic hair in a quick and easy way. That video has received almost 2 million views and over a thousand comments, which is absolutely crazy and I never expected to receive that kind of attention when there were already so many videos on the subject of how to draw hair. Since then, I didn't make any more tutorials because I was busy with a lot of other projects, but now I've finally found the time to start making more tutorials. So for this video, I decided to make another tutorial that expands upon the three-step process idea that I showed you in my How to Draw Realistic Hair video. Only this time, I want to show you some more examples of how you can use this three-step process to draw basically anything, not just hair. The main purpose of this process is to break down a drawing into some simple steps that give you more control with how much attention to detail you put into a drawing and how much time you spend on a drawing. The idea is that even with a little bit of effort and time spent, the drawing is still good enough. I'll speak more about this later in the tutorial. Before I continue, I want to talk about how I usually create drawings. The steps I take almost always go like this. I start with a reference image, which I edit in Photoshop and print to use while drawing. Please watch my last tutorial on how to prepare reference images for drawing to see what I mean. You can find the link to that tutorial in the description below. After I've printed the reference images, I then use a light box to trace the outlines in order to save time and get as much accuracy as possible for the positioning of elements in the image. I plan on doing a separate video about my thoughts on tracing, so keep an eye out for that one. Once I have the outlines, the next step is basically to render the image. And by render, I mean create a drawing that resembles the reference image as much as possible. This three-step process that I'm showing you in this video starts at this stage after the outlines are done. So before I show you some examples, I've created this guide to make things clearer. The first step is to place medium range values down everywhere. At this stage, I don't really care about the lightest and darkest areas of the drawing, so I don't worry about highlights or shadows. The next step is to draw in the darker tones and pay a little more attention to detail. I would say that this step is probably where most of the time should be spent because this is where you're doing most of the actual drawing. And the final step is to create highlights. To do this, I use an eraser and remove the values where the lightest parts of the image are. You can of course just leave the areas where the highlights are blank and not draw them in at all. But not having to worry about where you have to leave highlights while you're doing the drawing is part of what makes this process easy. It's also important to mention that a key element to make this process much quicker is the act of blending. So in between each of these steps, I blend the values I place. This saves me a lot of time because I don't have to do all the shading manually. In the end, we have a drawing with a good level of contrast and many shades of tones between those levels of contrast. Just to reiterate on what I mentioned earlier, the main purpose of this process is to save time and create drawings that are good enough. But I'm not saying you can't use this process to create perfect drawings. You can. You just need to spend more time on each step. The great thing about breaking down a drawing into these individual steps is that you have a lot more control with how far you want to take things and how detailed you want to go. Do it quickly and rough and create something that looks pretty good, or take your time with it and put more detail into everything. It's up to you. This process naturally came about for me because of many commissioned portraits where I had deadlines and I needed to finish a portrait quickly. So without compromising too much on quality, I can produce drawings much quicker and therefore save a lot of time. So now I'm going to create a few drawings using this three-step process to show you how it works. I want you to please pay attention to how fast I'm able to achieve a finished drawing that looks good enough, because as mentioned, that's the main purpose of these three steps for me, to draw quickly and good enough. I consider myself a perfectionist, but I do understand that time is our most valuable asset. I have began so many drawings and never completed them because I was trying to make them perfect, and I've learned that it's almost always better to finish something that is good enough as opposed to never finishing at all because I spent too much time on it and eventually lost the interest to continue and finish it. Okay, so the first drawing I'm going to show you this process for are a pair of lips. So I've already done my outlines and I'm going to go ahead and place all the medium tones just roughly. I'm not really worried about detail at this stage. I'm just placing the medium values down. I'm going to be using a 2B pencil to do all the drawings in this video, just to keep things simple. You could of course use an HB pencil for the medium tones, and then use a 2B pencil for the dark tones. Or if you want, use a 2B pencil for the medium tones, and then use a 3B or 4B to do the darker tones. I've got my pencil tilted so that I can cover a larger area.
So to finish off the first step, which is the medium tones, I'm going to blend all the values I've placed down so far. This is just to eliminate any visible strokes and smoothen everything. I'm going to be using a blending stump and some tissues to do the blending. After blending the medium tones, I can just barely see the outlines that I drew earlier. To avoid losing them completely, you can always do your outlines a little bit darker. So at this stage, I've basically placed some sort of value down pretty much everywhere. Now moving on to the next step, which will be drawing in the darker tones. 80% of the time you spend on your drawing will be in this step, as it involves the most detailing and actual rendering of the drawing. This is where most of the actual drawing happens, and the more time you spend here, the better the drawing will be. So in a way, this is where you can control the balance of good enough versus perfect. The idea with this three step process is that even just a little bit of effort will still produce good enough results, and it's up to you to decide how much time you want to spend. Generally, at this stage, you want to try to visualize the image you are drawing in simplified sections of tone, and then just place those values down. So rather than actually trying to draw smooth gradients where the tones meet each other, we can draw the different sections and then blend them later on. This is essentially what's saving us so much time. So to finish off this second step, I'm going to blend in all the darker tones that I just placed. I'm going to use a blending stump for this because I want to be able to target specific areas. In a lot of cases, I actually use the blending stump to draw as well. For example, here I'm using it to draw the vertical lines on the bottom lip. Now that I've blended all the darker values that I've placed, I'm going to repeat the second step and place some more darker tones down to achieve finer detail. This won't always be absolutely necessary and will depend on how much time you spend on the second step the first time around. I should also mention at this stage that these steps that I'm explaining don't have to be in order. As you'll see in the following drawings in this video, I will very often bounce back and forth between the steps where I place some values down, blend them draw in some more values, blend them again, erase some highlights, draw some more values, and so on. The reason there are three steps is just because there are three main actions that I'm taking to complete the drawing. Okay, so now that I've completed the second step, the next step is to erase the highlights. I'm going to use a wedge top eraser for this because I like the hardness of them, and I also like how it has corners to be able to target certain areas with more precision, as well as a flat edge to softly erase larger areas. So I'm using the eraser like a pencil, but instead of placing values down, I'm removing them. So that's it for this drawing. You can see that it's at a level now that is good enough, in my opinion. Of course it could be better, but for that I would have had to spend more time. This drawing took me approximately 20 minutes to do. Now I want to show you the same steps for four different drawings which I've already drawn outlines for. For the next drawing, I'm going to be drawing a hand. Here's the first step, placing down the values for the medium tones. As I mentioned earlier, these steps don't have to be in order, and you can keep going back and forth with them. For this drawing, I'm mixing the first and second step and placing down some darker values right away because I don't want to lose some of the outlines. Now I'm going to go ahead and blend the values that I've placed down. Now I'm going to do the second step and add more detail to this hand and more darker tones. Now 
Now I'm going to blend all the darker tones that I've placed down. And now for step three, I'm going to erase all the highlights and I'm also going to erase around the edges of the hand where I've gone over the outlines. Okay, so I've done the highlights and now I'm gonna go over the second step again, just to give it a little bit more attention to detail. Now I'm gonna blend the darker tones that I've just placed down again. Looking at this drawing so far and comparing it to the reference image, I can see that I haven't quite captured some of the darker areas here, here, and here. And as a result, my drawing looks a little flat. Sometimes when we focus too much on the micro details, we fail to see the tones from a macro level. One good way to take notice of these macro details is if you look at the reference image and squint your eyes. So I'm just going to go over this one more time and add these darker tones where I need to in order to add more contrast to this drawing. Again, as you can see, I'm jumping between all the steps over and over, adding values down, blending them, erasing, blending, and so on. Okay, that's the end of this drawing. This one took me about 30 minutes. For the next example, I'm going to draw this eye. I'm going to just jump right in and start placing down the medium tones. As I go, I'm going to make some of the outlines a little bit darker so I don't lose where they are. Okay, now I'm going to do the darker tones and detailing. At this point, I'm just going to go over it again and darken some of the larger areas to add more contrast to the drawing. Notice that I'm drawing the eyelashes last. This is because they are very sharp, dark lines that I want to place over everything else. Now I'm adding just a little bit more detail where the eyelashes appear in the reflection of the eye.
next thing is the third step, which is the highlights. As I've already left the reflection alone, which is the main highlight in this drawing, there isn't much else going on except for around the white areas of the eye and the area below the end of the brow. Now finally I'm just going to go over it one more time to add a little bit more detail. That's it. This eye took just under 20 minutes to draw. The next example I want to show you is of this flower. This example is probably the best one to show you how these three steps can really help you draw things quickly, if you choose to do it quickly. So now starting with step one, placing down the medium tones. Now step two. I should say that for this one, I took a more messy approach just to try to show you how, even though I'm not paying too much attention to detail, it still turns out good enough, which was the goal with this particular drawing. I want to show you how these three basic steps can give you control to create a quick drawing that looks good enough, with the option to easily make it more detailed if you want to. Now I'm going to repeat step 2 for more detail. Now the highlights. Now I'm going over it one more time to enhance the detail. This drawing took me about 15 minutes to finish. For this final example, I draw a portrait of a woman. The last drawing I did was very quick and rough. But for this one, I take my time a little more to show you how the steps can allow you to pay more attention to detail as well, by focusing on smaller areas at a time. After I do the first step and place some values down almost everywhere, I break it down into individual sections. So I do the three steps on just one eye, then the other eye, then the nose, then the mouth, and then the hair.
Okay, that's the end of this drawing. This one took me just over an hour to draw, which is not a long time to complete a portrait. And if I wanted to, I could have taken two or more hours and made it even better, which ultimately is the point of this tutorial, achieving good enough results without spending too much time. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. I've used these steps myself to create countless commissioned portraits, which you can take a look at in the gallery section of my website. I think it's quite important if you're creating commissioned drawings for clients that you need to manage your time carefully and I hope these steps help you do that. I would also like to sincerely apologize for taking about six years to create another tutorial for you guys. Despite the amazing response I got from that how to draw hair tutorial, I'm going to do my best to keep creating new tutorials more frequently so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. If you didn't understand something or need to ask me something regarding these steps or anything drawing related, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I would love to hear if these steps helped you out in any way and what you think of them. Also, check out my website at sirkanyena.art as I will be producing real-time drawing courses over there if you want to learn more. Thank you so much for watching this far and I'll see you again soon.